I was a fellow at the Lao Rugby Federation for three years. In, in Lao culture, girls participating in sport, it bucks the expectations of what women will do. Before rugby came to their communities, they didn't have a chance to participate in sport at all. They don't have the freedom to run around and, and play because it's dangerous. But you can learn so many important things through participating in sport that are not just going to benefit you on the playing field, but also throughout the rest of your life. Communication, trust, teamwork, all of these things. So we've been working with her for the past uh, six months down in Vientiane as an intern, supporting her to become a coach. So she's now operating in three different languages. She's taught herself how to use a computer, taught herself how to type, and she's blossomed into this wonderful leader. You know, in, in my experience on PAA, sometimes I was participating in really high-level meetings, and sometimes I was literally fixing the toilets. But that's service, that you need to get the job done. Originally, Princeton in Asia was a, a group of Presbyterian sort of semi-missionaries from Princeton. 1898 was the year when the first Princeton graduate, Robert Gailey, uh, came to Tianjin and founded the Tianjin YMCA. You know, if you look at the um, at old China, you know, the, the end of the Qing Dynasty in the early Republican area, people were in poverty whether in Beijing or whether in the countryside, for educated people to be in some healthy uh, entertainment, you know. Uh, that's the, the why YMCA started. I would give credit to Princetonians who worked in Beijing to help, you know, people in China understand the West, the Western culture. Yeah, definitely, you, there, there, there's a relationship to how China started you know, becoming a modernized country. It takes time, a century of time. Um, a lot of, you know, a lot of missionary activity in these countries was running hospitals, for example. It's schools and hospitals, that was what it was always about. Um, so a lot of that is, I think, is still the spirit of, the, the sort of service spirit, I think, is still very much there. PIA fellows have been coming to Yakage for 20 years and even now today I will hear the people in Yakage talk about the PIA fellows from years and years ago and they'll still talk about the impact that they've had and little things of their lessons, specific lessons that they created or books that they brought to the schools, they're still being talked about. Mm -hmm. まあ、once every two weeks, we have an English conversation group for some of the adults who live in Yakage. Nico is one of the women in our class, and she has such a passion to spread English on to her children. I want, I hope, so they become uh, some um, creator. If they can speak English, they work every country. So I. I uh, have to uh, speak 
and run English for them. There are only four foreigners here, so I can count the number of foreigners on one hand because it's such a small town. The people invite you into their homes and they really take you under their wing. We have a woman here who invites us every week to her house and she'll cook dinner for us and she'll let us play with her kids and we just really become like a part of the family. And we have a ramen truck that comes every Tuesday and it's just so fun to have things like that in the town that are so genuine and specific to Yakage. You want to address you know, the really big global problems, the big environmental problems, the big energy problems. Um, I think you can have a huge impact here. So uh, Princeton in Asia and the Natural Resources Defense Council uh, have been partners now for six years. So even the smallest projects will make some, some sort of impact. The pollution index is relevant because it really gives, it gives a number to what you're experiencing in terms of pollution. As an environmental lawyer, I think it's very important to sponsor people on the ground in places like China where they can make a real difference in addressing things like emissions. Uh, because if places like China don't get their emissions under control, then there's not much hope for the rest of us. One of the coolest projects I work on is called our walkability project. Uh, and by doing so, encourage walking uh, um, and try to decrease Chinese cities' reliance on uh, cars. It's like a perfect marriage between NRDC and PIA and working in China, clean the air so that you will have a peaceful, happy life and safe life. The amazing thing about G Show was a young, service minded Princeton student walked into my office, Rory Truex, and said, Why aren't we doing more service in places that really need us and places where we can learn so much? And I thought to myself, if not us, then who? And to be honest, all we were sure about is that 10 Princeton kids were going to go there and get some gastrointestinal disease. The change is night and day. I think uh, I become more confident than before, yeah. The PIA is very important and uh, it's really helpful to my life. I decided to teach English because I joined PIA. The thing is, in class, you just teach the language. But out of class, you can teach culture. You can teach a different countries or spirit. Um, I am the youngest teacher here. You know, some of the teachers are very old and they didn't experience the real standard English. And when I came back here, I just, you know, bring something new to here, <laughs> to the students. Uh, 115 years ago in Beijing, you know, the uh, Princeton students and some teachers that were there uh, trying to teach people and change things. And now, so I think this program is just like, has the same meaning as what it had in the past. Each of our teachers uh, has a ripple. We, we touch the lives of 20,000 students every year, and the PIA fellows donate the equivalent of six and a half million dollars of human capital to Asia every year. That connection that crosses kind of chronological generations is a really important part of the program. The PIA network is a network for life, and one of the things that unites us are the stories of our transformative experiences. Unexpected. Courageous. There was always time to just laugh. Constant energy. I think it would be springboard. Discovery.
spirituality, religion, the purpose of education. These are global questions that I had. So I've had a start of my entire life. I got in front of a class of about 60 Vietnamese students and uh, it was kind of t t terrifying but the surprising thing was that um, yeah it was basically gone when I started speaking and it gave me some confidence to know that these children were learning from what I was trying to say or what I was trying to teach them. I worked at a small consulting firm in Bangkok and I would walk to work every day in these old sandals of mine and then change into these heels when I got to my office. And one day, one of them was missing. And I couldn't figure out, you know, who would take these old, like one old woman's sandal. And eventually I found out that the maid at my office had taken one of them to show her family how large my feet were because it was just like so unbelievable that you could have this large a feet and you needed physical proof. <laughs> it's helped me lay roots. Uh, it helped me meet my wife and she's the most incredible woman I've ever met and she's an unbelievable and climber and mother of my child and so without my Thai language skills I probably would have had a very difficult time meeting her. And then I have a company now that's about like stepping into the unknown and being comfortable with unfamiliar and learning from that. I am actually a very picky eater, so I was really nervous about PA How <laughs> was I going to literally survive, quite literally, what was I going to eat? So I got to discover, you know, new spices, new types of meat, um, and new ways of eating, and it was delicious. In addition to being a very picky eater, I was actually really bad at languages. Um, I still am, actually. Uh, so, you know, my first several months living there, I couldn't understand anything anyone was saying, but everyone stared at me everywhere I went because, I mean, I'm a black chick in Asia and in Chiang Mai, Thailand. And as the months went by, I began to pick up on what they were saying. I could actually eavesdrop. And all this time, I thought they were saying just like really mean things. They're just like, oh, look at her here. Ha 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 ha. And they were saying the most beautiful things that I had ever heard uttered about a human, and it completely changed my experience. The fellowship taught me a bunch of applications for skills that I had to be successful in, in Asia. And so now, um, 21 years later, I'm uh, uh, the co-founder and partner in a, in a firm uh, that does foreign direct investment advisory. So my biggest story from Indonesia was, among many, I was on a ferry that sunk. I was one of the lucky ones that swam for 18 hours and was rescued the next afternoon. 400 people died and 40 survived, and to me that means that I need to figure out the way that I can give back. So I've been working in public health and urban education ever since with a skill set that I never would have known I had had I not been thrown into crazy situations by Princeton in Asia.